Well, let's talk about this example then. This is some data from two different classes. One has 32 students, one has 27 students. It's just called class A and class B. This is a frequency table. It's showing how frequently each range of score came up. Three people got within this range, five people got in this range, and so on, right? You can compare them using the numbers, but sometimes it's helpful to put it in a graph because it's a visual representation and we like, most of us, most of us respond best to pictures. If you think about how these are presented, the first few questions are things like, why did this person choose that type of graph and is it misleading? Why would you choose this kind of graph? What does that show well? What do circle graphs allow you to do easily? Um, well, to see the percentage. To see the percentage? To see the... Um, well, to compare all the categories with each other. So there are more students Absolutely. There's more here. So it's hard to compare them unless you look at percentages. They're, they're not drastically different, but it doesn't make much sense to compare the numbers because one has more students than the other. This allows you to see how it's split up amongst the categories in a really easy visual way. The things are labeled properly. I know it's hard to tell because the categories have percentages, and then there's percentages like 40% of the students got between 70 and 79%. That's the only thing that is maybe hard to understand, but I would say something like compare categories between the two classes easily, see what fraction. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can put in there. Are the graphs misleading? I would say no, they're not. They're labeled. They're, uh, they're drawn accurately. They're labeled. Oops, they're drawn accurately. labeled, etc. They're not skewed where one part of it looks bigger than the other. Sometimes you can make these uh, these circle graphs where it's like three-dimensional. And so the, the front half of it looks different than the back half of it. Sometimes they do that where the front piece looks a lot bigger. If they kind of make it look three-dimensional, it's hard to draw, but you, there's some in the textbook they should look at. State two conclusions. There's a whole bunch of conclusions you could make out of this. One conclusion you could make is looking at this. What might you make about these two classes? Usually students like to make these kind of conclusions. Um, um, class A did worse than class B. Class A did worse than class B. Well, you didn't phrase it how I was expecting because, uh, well, that's good. It's, class A did worse than class B. What might you, why might you conclude that? Because um, they got more 50s and 60s. B got more 50s and 60s. What would you say? A got more 50s and 60s, or B got more 50s and 60s? A. A did. A did. Uh, A did worse because they have a bit more than that. Yep. Okay, that's reasonable. What's another piece of evidence from the graph that supports that? What do you think? There's two different amounts of students, but when you change them to percentages, it's showing the fraction of each class. Like that, That's important to remember here. You can't compare the numbers because there's different amounts of students. But if you compare the percentage, then it's more reasonable to compare them. Does that make sense when you look at percentages? Because it's, it's equalizing, right? When you do percentage, basically it's like saying, if you had 100 students, how many would be in each category? That's what a percentage is, right? What out of 100? So this is like saying, if you made them, if you had a class of 100, like this class, you know, 40 of them would be in that category, category 22 would be in that category, 13 would be in this category. That's what a percentage is like doing. It's like saying, if they were equal, what would we have? Um, some more evidence to support that. You're saying there's more of those two categories, 50s and 60s. There's there's uh, a lot less 80s and 90s in this class. There's a lot more 80s and 90s in this class. So you might say this class did better overall, if you want. 
Um, th- so lots of those things you could say. You could have something else to add? Maybe. Six more there. And they even have less numbers. So and they have less numbers? Yeah, this is higher. I mean, yeah, you're, this is way bigger than this. Although this is bigger than that. So it might, you know, if you want to make conclusions, sometimes you have to look at them together. Like that together is bigger than that. There's a lot of different conclusions you can make. I'm not going to limit you to what you put there. This is shown a different way here, and this gets at, I think, what the idea that a few of you pointed out, that you can't really compare numbers, right, because there's different numbers of students. There's different numbers of students, so when you make a bar graph, does that show percentages? doesn't, right? I would say that this is not as good since it shows numbers. And numbers are different in each class. There's a different number of students in each class, right? All right, what are some advantages? Um, it's easier to compare. It's easier to compare each category because they're exactly side by side. Although, again, the not, it's not necessarily fair because there's different numbers of students in each class, right? Think about if we made this to the extreme. If I had two classes and A had 100 students in it, that would be pretty unmanageable, but let's say it did. And B had 10 students in it. And let's say class A got 10 A's, okay? And class B only got 6 A's. Which class is better? <laughs> Which class is smarter? Yeah, 6 out of 10 is a pretty high 60%, right? Whereas this is only 10% of those students are getting A's. But if you just look at the numbers, A, A has a higher number, right? So you can't always just compare numbers, right? you got to look at percentages to compare if the total is different. That's the, that's the idea of this section is just looking at how data is presented. Does it make sense to present it this way? How could you present it better if possible? Okay. There's one show you no question. The question is in the textbook, but I, I put the visuals here in case you want to refer to them. If you can fit it in the space here, that would be good. There's only one example for this section. It would help to, to look at the key ideas in your textbook before you start on this other stuff. Okay? As I said, my other class had trouble following the outlines here, so I think I'm going to tweak it a bit so that it's easier to see the different activities that I'm asking you to do. I'm essentially asking you to do a couple things here, and I'm, I'm saying for communicate the ideas, only do number one to th two. You can omit number three, because I don't think it adds a lot to our understanding. And in the interest of time, there's no way we have time to do everything in that book. So I'm, I'm picking a few questions. It would have been easier for me if I just said, for every section, do number one, to the last question, <laughs> right? If I just said for every section do number one to the last question, what I went through and did is picked out the ones I thought were the best or a good selection for you to do. I'm asking you to do less questions, but you need to do a better job than you would have done. If I asked you to do one to, if I ask you to do every question in the whole book, I would understand that you are having a hard time managing that and you're just scrambling through quickly to try and get them done. I'm only asking you to do two here, five here. I want you to do a good job of them. All right. I, I realize that I haven't shown you something that I want to talk about before you get completely going on this. But let me stop this first.